Hi, this video is going to be about quantitative genetics, plants breeding and selection. And here is a problem. Two pure lines of corn have mean complements of 9 and 3 inches respectively. The polygenes involved in this trait all exhibit additive gene action. And the first question is, crossing these two lines is expected to produce a progeny with mean complements in inches of... And here is the five answers to choose from. If you know how to solve this problem, you may stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own. And when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. According to our problem, we have two lines with complements of uh, 9 and 3 inches. So we can suggest that genotype uh, of one would be homozygous dominant and another one homozygous recessive with 9 inches and 3 inches respectively. So that gives us uh, that uh, each dominant allele would give two, oh, sorry, 4.5 inches each and each uh, recessive allele would give us 1.5 to the complex each. So combined 3 and 9 respectively. So when we cross uh, two such genotypes we can build a Punnett square so this is going to be two parents, one homozygous dominant and another homozygous recessive. Uh, all our progeny going to be uh, heterozygous. And that means that all the F1 generation uh, going to be genetically uniform. And if we have here that each uh, recessive allele would give us 1.5 to the complex and each uh, dominant allele would give us 4.5 to the complex. That means that here all the progeny going to be 6 inches uh, length of the cob. So the correct answer would be C. And now uh, second question, if the variation of F1 complex ranges from 5.5 to 6.5 inches, this variation is estimated to be due to segregation at, uh, and once again, here's a five answers to choose from. And how we are going to solve this problem? Uh, I want to show you another example. Imagine that this trait uh, is under control not one gene with uh, two alleles, as in uh, our example before, we have uh, uh, three states, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive and heterozygous, when we have one locus, one gene with two alleles, one dominant, another recessive. Imagine that we have, uh, once again, two uh, variants, that one could be capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, and we have to cross with uh, small a, small a, and small b, small b. Once again, this genotype would be 9 inches, and this would be 3 inches. So when we cross this 2, we are going to get genotype that is capital A, small a and capital B, small b. So uh, the length of the comp in, of this genotype also would be 6, as in our example here. So uh, no matter how many uh, genes control this trait, so in this example this is going to be two genes, one could be gene A, another could be gene B, and we may have three uh, or more than three different genotypes, but uh, for the progeny, we may have here only one type uh, uh, genotype that is going to be heterozygous for both genes. 
So all the progeny F1 progeny also would be uniform as in our previous example here. And uh, we shouldn't see any uh, variation in size because uh, genotypically all the progeny uh, would be uniform. But uh, we are given here that uh, we have um, variation in uh, length of the cob. So the correct answer would be none of the above. We cannot answer uh, this question with information given. We only can suggest that all this variation uh, when we have uniform uh, genotype would be due to environment. So just environmental factors would cause this variation. So when we have a field with uh, uniform, genotypically uniform plants, we still may see variation uh, in size, in uh, different uh, properties of the plants, but all this variation would be due to just environmental factors such as uh, rain, sun, uh, soil, nutrients that uh, in the soil. And uh, we cannot get uniform conditions for the whole field. Uh, some parts of the field uh, may experience different environmental conditions and other parts would experience different environmental conditions. So that would cause um, variation in the cob size. And this would be our answer. This is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.